So this is a great article. The strange guest budget hotels, budget hotels are buzzing about, who has a signature taper, paint over stodgy hotel room artwork with his own whimsical work. There's a spy museum in Maryland. The museum of what's news. Well, we go through the stats, look through the real news. The news that should be news, but really isn't most of the time. News is news. The news is news. <laughs> So this is a great article. For strange guest budget hotels, budget hotels are buzzing about. Ours check in secretly tries to gussy up the pictures. I think this is awesome. So you have an owner of a best va America's Best Value Inn in B Butte, Montana. He got a peculiar call from an employee one summer day a few years ago in room 206, a mundane piece of hotel art. A pink print of a rose from the mid-1990s had been painting over with a wide-eyed cartoon beaver. <laughs> My head housekeeper at the time said, there's been vandalism. We call us the guy who owns the hotel for 33 years. I said, well, it is what it isn't. It's quirky. Intrigued, he Googled the name, scrolled on the back of a picture, and by lunchtime he had figured out what happened. Far from being angry, he was delighted. He had been hit by an artist known as T-Bang, who has a signature taper, painting over stodgy hotel room artwork with his own whimsical work. Mr. Byrne paid some $600 to have a doctored painting reframed with professional art glass and add a plaque with the artist's name, room number, at the date of the work. Yeah. And that hangs in the hallway. I was going to say, where is this in the hallway? That hangs in the hallway of America's Best Value Inn. Yeah. Page 12. I wonder if I look up some of the pictures that I can post on it. Mm. <laughs> so we can see what they look like. There's no image here except for the gnome. Eh? Uh, T. Bang is actually Terror, uh, I'm sorry, Terrell pa Powell, who's more respectable in mixed media work, sells for up to $25,000 of art galleries in Santa Fe. He makes colorful paintings and sculptures disguised as a native with folk art bent. Now he's on a quest to hit hotels in every U.S. state under his alter ego. He has revised works in half of the country so far, he says. <laughs> Plus, I need to get in on this. <laughs> Plus a cruise ship. <laughs> I'm, I'm sad I haven't seen any of these. You need to get a Sharpie. Plus a cruise ship in International Waters. He hopes to publish a book of his hotel art when he finished. Online observers cheer him on, while some hotel workers look the other way. Um, he's 62. Moved with his wife from Texas to Santa Fe four years ago. He stumbled into a strange hobby while on a road for art shows about a decade ago. As he worked a decade, now we're just learning about him. As he became... Uh, uh, yeah, as he worked on one of his own pieces at now closed motel in Texas, his eyes kept drifting to a western themed black building <laughs> hanging above the desk. <laughs> it was these cheap paintings they probably got at a garage sale, he says. I was like, what kind of artist am I if I don't doctor these up? <laughs> so he took his own paint to a work, including adding a sea serpent in the lake. Oh my god. And, passions, and a passion was born. He sounds like a troll. <laughs> At first, Mr. Powell says, I would love to see his work there. Sounds Seriously. great. At first, Mr. Powell says, artist mischief was a joke. A test of whether anyone even noticed a strike against the wickedest prince he saw in hotel chains. Now it's a part of his brand and his business. So he travels with his painting supplies as well as tools to remove hotel paintings. You know, they're fixed to a wall sometimes. Oh Can't God. even get them off with hardware. Few hotel managers started to recognize his name. He rarely gets called on the spot. It can take months for hotels to even notice a changed artwork, <laughs> since housekeepers are more concerned with variables such as TV. He sometimes buys his altar pieces and has sold them for up to three thousand dollars. Wow. Some travelers are highly fascinated by hotel decor. A group of fans of old Marriott carpet patterns, or is assault to leave secret marks. Weird documents, wall tattoos, yada yada yada. As you can see on my other channel. <laughs> Let's see what we have. Now, Missouri, one time he actually, um, <laughs> I remember a million years ago, Four Seasons and T Bang and Warhol, Picasso or something, he said, but if it's a cheap print, they're going to get it. He had a tornado and a flying, oh, here's two pictures here. He had a tornado and a flying house to a landscape in Kansas, like there's a UFO. <laughs> Just see it's a fair lighting. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, tornado and flying house to a landscape in Kansas, cover a ship's wheel of Abe Lincoln silhouettes in Illinois, and put cheeky, uh, 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 
pants down his nose. <laughs> On a pair of prints at Holiday Inn in Missouri. Missouri stunt didn't go well. He says a former manager used to lend five of paintings. Stacked a five hundred dollar finalist bill and banned him. Representatives of the International Talk Group, parent company Holiday Inn, declined to comment. <laughs> Some of the us believe Mr. Powell's names add value. One Louisiana offered him a free room to repaint artwork. I was trying to joke on him. So here's the story of Midland, Texas, a double G last year, before his gig was up. Four times in five years, he visited for a hotel to paint over for Boeing Arts. That's, a, that's like his favorite place. Yeah. He festooned a print of overlapping circles into bird faces with orange and yellow beaks over a landscape of indistinct ombre tones. He had a UFO lifting a cow to a hallway picture of a Texas flatlands, and he had a red horse with neon polka dots. Liz Wynn, general manager of a Midland Double Tree, I come to see an intriguing mystery. The tall staff began hanging for doctor paintings in their offices. Miss Wynn's fiance and art lover inspired her to appreciate the piece's uniqueness. In September 2021, Miss Wynn was eating lunch with her fiance when she got a call from an employee telling her a mysterious painter was at the hotel asking if he could get the pieces. Eager to meet him, she rushed back. Her fiance, Steve Ford, Midland County investigator, went along. Eh? Mr. Powell's mischief deserved a little scare, they decide. I announced who I was, and I was here to talk about the vandalism. And after looking in his face with shocks, says Mr. Ford, who wears a gun and a badge. But I couldn't keep a straight face, so it went downhill pretty fast. <laughs> Mr. Powell froze. I was wondering if I should lawyer up, he says. Ultimately, the pair shook the artist's hand and allowed him to take the paintings free. But replacing artwork is a pain. Miss Wynn says she should never bring herself to be angry with T-Bang. And it's, honestly, I always laugh, she says. <laughs> That's There's a spy museum in Maryland. <laughs> the museum of one of the nation's most secret government agencies that recently opened, following a two-year closure, and puts a new exhibit. Um, it's the National Cryptologic Museum outside Washington, D.C. It's home to several pieces of equipment that were in operation until just a few years ago to generate the codes the president could use to authorize a launch. What have you got now? A button? Well, uh, this is the secret. This is what's interesting about this article. Yeah. Placement of retired equipment in the National Security Agency's museum reveals an upgrade to a classified system that's rarely talked about by government officials. <laughs> See, so they had an opportunity during the two years to go through a dramatic change in technology of the code generators. And so we have on display with servers and machines that crave nuclear codes from the United States from the 1980s all the way through a couple years ago. <laughs> and the machinery of nuclear Armageddon's upgrade to nuclear code system demonstrates isn't a thing of the past. Yet the acknowledgement of a recent technology refresh surprised several nuclear and security experts who said they had no prior indication of code generation equipment had been overhauled. Oh. God. Didn't know until all of a sudden really new recent piece of equipment just showed up in the museum. We never, ever, ever, ever get to hear about the process for generating these things. Uh. Said nuclear arms policy expert Jeffrey Lewis at Middlebury Institute of Tech International Studies in Monterey. I'm still sitting here thinking, are you guys sure you want to share us? <laughs> NSA referred questions and updates to the system to the Defense Department. Pentagon so person perform, uh, confirm continuing efforts to modernize. And so, new exhibit suggests to me there's been some dramatic improvements in capability what we have today. Uh, nothing's going to be compromised by showing you something that was used all the way through 2019. Goodness. On display, several pieces of equipment involved in code generation, including a computer server called the Deck Alpha, that generated secret keys the president would use to initiate attack, and the MP37, that manufactured a physical sealed authenticator system, cards with nuclear launch codes used to verify words of strategic command. To local commanders. Mr. Hallen says staff come to archives to refresh the historical exhibits. He described a Russian fish, a dark gray steel instrument Germans used during World War II to intercept Russian radio signals spread over nine different frequencies, as well as great finds inside a warehouse. Just fan it's just sitting in a warehouse. Spread over nine different frequencies, as well as great finds inside a warehouse. They all last captured from the Germans in 1945. Great find found it in a warehouse to put in a museum. I always wonder about the basements of these museums. <laughs> you got, you know, wherever it's the Smithsonian Art Museum University, here we got the Spy Museum. <laughs> it's in the basement down there. The basement. Nine frequencies. Gosh. Well, thank you for joining us on 
news. What's news? What's news? <laughs> What's news? What's news? This is interesting. They're gonna start this nuclear power plant in Georgia. It's a brand new plant. I didn't know they still built plants. They always talk about there's no plants in this country. Or Georgia. new ones? Yeah, they're building this new. I think they're just adding on a new reactor to plants that are in operation. Hmm. So just start loading a, a radioactive fuel into a reactor, new reactor. First American nuclear reactor built in decades to begin generating in the coming months. It takes months. So what they do is they transfer 157 fuel assemblies into the core and plant in Volatile, southeast of Augusta, in the next few days. There's already two op reactors operating, but the fuel's being loaded into a third unit and a fourth unit still under construction. So it's half done. 157 fuel assemblies amounts to 90 tons of uranium oxide. It's loaded by crane engine reactor, according to Southern Nuclear. They're going to test whether plants' cooling and steam supply will work, but the fuel is inside a reactor at super high temperatures and pressures created by splitting atoms. Hmm. For commercial operation after this, this is October, and it take this until the end of March. <laughs> At some point, if YouTube was recommending to me, for whatever reason, there's a whole genre of videos of nuclear reactors starting up, and it's just a pool of water and rods, and the, the things come together, and I guess it's a thing that people like, I don't know if it's like, you know, AMSR or what, but I forget what the term is, but there's a term, you get like a blue flash, the second it touches, you get this weird effect <laughs> occurs, and now you get online. <laughs> I forget, it's, wow. a, it's a scientific name we do, like nuclear engineering. I've seen that. But it's like a whole genre on YouTube. If you if they ever get one, you click it, and so you can get for like weeks. <laughs> it's nuclear reactors starting up. Yeah. It's really interesting. So that's what they're doing right now in Reactor 3. With that 90 tons, good gracious, 90 tons of uranium oxide. 157, I want to do a math to figure out how much each rod is. Yeah. 90 tons of 157 assemblies. But maybe if the assembly's more than just a rod, it might actually be like the whole square. Hmm. But no. This is the one I found interesting too. So much in this one edition of a journal.